All right, guys, so we want to solve this question here. We want to figure out the equation of the tangent line at the origin, 0, 0, of arctan xy equals arc sine 3x plus 3y. So remember that our general, uh, our general plan of attack, we want to find the tangent line at a point, is to first find the derivative. Once we find that derivative, evaluate at our particular point, in this case, the 0, 0. That will give us the slope of the tangent line. Once we have the slope of our tangent line, we then need to use point-slope form with our point 0, 0 and our newfound slope to write the equation of the line, the tangent line. And generally speaking, we want that tangent line in... Uh, slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b form. Now, the one that makes this one kind of tricky, the reason that this is kind of tricky is that we have an implicitly defined function, okay, an implicitly defined relation, and uh, it involves inverse, inverse trigonometric functions. So this is kind of tricky, but let's just, uh, let's just, you know, follow the derivative rules that we have learned and see what happens. It's probably going to be a lot of algebra, but uh, you know, let's see where it takes us. So we want to find the derivative, that is dy dx. Since this is implicitly defined, we just take the derivative with respect to x of both sides of the equation. So we'll say the derivative of arctan xy equals the derivative, again, with both of these with respect to x, of arc sine 3x plus 3y. Okay, this is going to require a chain rule. Okay, because we don't have just the derivative of arctan, we have the derivative of arctan xy. Now, recall what the derivative of arctan is. It's u prime over 1 plus u squared. So here, there is u. u is xy. So the derivative is of the entire left-hand side is the derivative of xy divided by 1 plus xy squared. Okay? It's the derivative of arctan. It's u prime over 1 plus u squared. Derivative of arctan. Okay? What about the left-hand side? Excuse me. Um, I, I, just, I think I might have just confused left and right. I, I don't recall what I said, but I think I might have. So if I confuse left and right, forgive me. Left-hand side derivative. Now we're moving to the right-hand side derivative. Let's see here. The derivative of arc sine is u prime over the square root of 1 minus u squared. So we need to write the derivative of u, u is the inside function, so the derivative of 3x plus 3y over the square root of 1 minus u squared, 3x plus 3y squared. Okay, let's take care of both of these numerators. Now that is a product rule situation on the left hand numerator. We have x times y. So we need to be careful with that. The denominators are pretty much done for the time being. 1 plus xy squared. Now let's see here. We take the derivative of the first function times the second function. So that's the derivative of x times y plus the derivative of the second function times the first function equals, so that's our product rule application. Now let's see about the numerator here. Now that's just the sum of two functions. So we know that we can break that sum on the numerator apart. Okay, so we can simply say that that's the derivative with respect to x of 3x plus the derivative with respect to x of 3y. Okay, now let's finish this derivative off. 
Let's see here. Equals, okay. We still have the same denominators. 1 plus x, y squared, and the square root of 1 minus 3x plus 3y squared. All right, here we have the derivative of x with respect to x. That's just 1. So 1 times y, we're left with just y. Here we have the derivative of y with respect to x. So the derivative of just that linear expression y is 1. But since we took the derivative of y with respect to x, we have to multiply that result of 1 by dy dx. So this right here essentially results in just dy dx. But dy dx times x. So x, I'll write that as x and dy dx. Over here, the derivative of 3x, well, that's the derivative of an x term with respect to x is just business as usual. So that is just 3. But here we have the derivative of 3y with respect to x. So we would imagine that if that wasn't a y there, it would just be the derivative would be 3. And that's the case when there's a y there, except that we have to add a dy dx. So it's plus 3 dy dx. The thing you have to remember with implicit differentiation is that if you multiply, excuse me, if you take the derivative of some function that's not a function of x, like you take the derivative with respect to x, you have to multiply by d, in this case dy over dx, where if it's like a your uh, theta is the variable, maybe d theta over dx, or if the variable is t, dt over dx, uh, because you're taking the, uh, the chain rule, like we explained in previous uh, lessons, the chain rule is what's going on in the background there. All right, so we have taken, <coughs> excuse me, all of the derivatives, but you know what do we have to do with implicit differentiation? Uh, we need to figure out uh, how to solve this for dy dx. Now, that's going to take a little bit of uh, heavy lifting as far as algebra is concerned. What I would do here, I think, is break these fractions apart, I believe. That is, like, write this as uh, y over 1 plus xy squared plus x dx. Nope, that's a dy. dy dx over 1 plus xy squared, and then break the other fraction apart and say this is equal to 3 over the square root of 1 minus 3x plus 3y squared uh, plus 3 dy dx over that same denominator, the square root of 1 minus 3x plus 3y squared. Okay? Now, I will, I will say this. There's, there's probably an easier way to do this um, because of our current context. The current context does not ask us for the derivative. So if we really wanted to, we could save ourselves a, a lot of trouble, I think, and what we could do would just be to go ahead and substitute a 0, 0 in for every x and every y, and that would simplify a whole lot of stuff. Then it would be a lot easier to solve for dy dx. Now, the only reason we could do that is because we're not asked to find dy dx specifically. We're asked to find the equation of the tangent line. So we could figure out the equation of the tangent line from this expression right here, by just simply plugging in a 0 for x and a 0 for y, simplifying and solving for dy dx. That will get us our slope. But I'm going to go ahead and find dy dx because that's how we're going to have, that's what a lot of our homework and uh, other questions are going to ask us, ask us is to find dy dx. So I'm going to go ahead and do it, and it's kind of nasty here, but we'll figure it out. So the reason I broke these apart is because I want to isolate the dy dx terms let's say on the left-hand side. So there's a dy dx term and there's a dy dx term. <clears throat> so I need to get both of those on the left-hand side and I'll take anything that does not have a dy dx, namely this term right here, to the right-hand side. So let's see here. 
I'm going to have an x dx dy over 1 plus xy squared minus this one minus 3 dy dx over the square root of 1 minus 3x plus 3y squared equals, okay, I have a 3 over the square root of 1 minus 3x plus 3y squared minus this term over here, which is just a y over 1 plus xy squared. Now, the reason I did that is because I want to solve for dy dx. So if I factor out a dy dx out of the left-hand side, <clears throat> I'll have dy dx times, well, it'll be a lot of uh, fractions going on here, x plus 1, x divided by 1 plus xy squared minus 3 over the square root of 1 minus 3x plus 3y three x plus three y squared equals you know the uh, the uh, the right hand side so this is three over one minus three x plus three y squared minus y over one plus x y squared now to solve for dy dx, I just need to divide both sides by this entire factor here, and that'll solve for dy dx. So I can say that dy dx, let's see here, how do I want to write this? Running out of room here. So let's say, let's put it over here. dy dx is going to be a really big fraction, compound fraction. It's going to have this as its numerator and this is its denominator because I'm dividing by that. So let's see here. I'm going to have a 3 over the square root of 1 minus 3x plus 3y squared minus y over 1 plus xy squared divided by this. So that's x over 1 plus xy squared minus 3 over the square root of 1 minus 3x plus 3y squared. So there's dy dx. Now, could it be simplified further? Probably so. Typically, you know, if we have a rational, in this case, a, a compound uh, complex, we call it complex rational expression, we typically want to write it as a single fraction. That is, get a common denominator on the top, get a common denominator on the bottom, uh, and then take care of that division and simplify everything we can. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and do that because I'm not a board space, and it's not completely necessary for the problem we are working. The problem we're working asks us to find the slope, the equation of the line, furthermore, at 0, 0. So if I want to find the slope at 0, 0, so that is dy dx at 0, 0, all I have to do is substitute in a 0 everywhere for x and a 0 everywhere for y. Now let's, let's since we're running out of board space here, let's do this in our head. If we plug in a 0 for x and a 0 for y, according to our point here, we would have, for this top left-hand portion, we would have 3 divided by the square root of 1, but if x is 0 and y is 0, 3x plus 3y is 0 plus 0 squared. So you have 3 divided by the square root of 1 minus 0, or 3 divided by 1, so you just get a 3 there. Okay, so the top left-hand, top, top left-hand part of my expression here is 3. 
What about here? If y is 0 and x is 0, I get 1 plus 0 squared on the denominator, but I get a 0 on the numerator. So it's 0 divided by 1, so I get minus 0 over here. Now let's go to the denominator. I have, let's see here, x, which is 0, divided by 1 plus xy squared. So 0 divided by 1 plus 0 squared, that's just 0. Minus 3 divided by this same expression we just discussed, 3x plus 3y, if x and y are both 0, that's just 0 squared. So the square root of 1 is just 1, so you have minus 3. So I think we see there that we end up getting 3 over negative 3. 3 over negative 3, of course, reducing to 1. Excuse me? <laughs> negative 1. So here is our slope, m. So the slope of our tangent line, after all that work, is just negative 1. Now if we want to write the, finally find our solution here to write the equation of the tangent line, Use point slope form. Point slope form is, of course, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So here is our point x1 and y1. So just now make the proper substitutions. So y minus y1, but y1 is 0, equals m, which is negative 1 times x minus x1, which is 0. Okay, so I think that simplifies really nicely in the fact that we have y equals negative x. So there is the equation of our tangent line of our original very unpleasant looking implicitly defined relation. So the, after all of that, after all of this derivative, all of this, all of this to get dy dx, after all of that, the slope of the tangent line at the origin ends up being very simple, almost the identity function, the opposite of the identity function. So a lot, a lot of stuff simplified there. And that answer is much more, uh, much more simple than I expected it to be, that's for sure. But I think we uh, I think we're good there. I don't, I don't think we made any, any mistakes. We'll find out if you see mistakes. Let me know. But I think we're good there. All right. I hope that's been helpful. If you have any more questions, always feel free to ask.